Hi, I am acting teacher Michael Bean, and this is your acting lesson for myfreeactingclass.com for Monday, April the 18th. Uh, happy day after Easter. Uh, we have a couple of self-tapes uh, that were submitted by students today. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, we're going to review those, and this is part four of our five-part Keys to Chaos self-tapes uh, lessons. And so just a quick reminder, we have already done story and style and relationships. Today we're going to talk about changes, the changes that happen in the script. And uh, next week we're going to talk about want. Uh, and then we're going to move into a series of uh, lessons talking about character. So I'm excited about that. Uh, but today is changes. Now we did a listen on this fairly recently. I will show you how to look that up on the YouTube channel if you're like, wait, but I want Michael Bean to say more. I think that every time you get the ideas and you get them in a little bit of a different language, you get them from a different teacher, or even if you get them from me on a different day, uh, hopefully it, hearing it in new language helps it land. Because one of the goals here is not necessarily to understand everything about acting or to have it all laid out in terms of really clear, concrete ideas. I mean, you're not writing an essay, you're trying to do a physical thing. And that means the goal is to internalize these skills. And you internalize them through practice and you can get the advantage of other people's experience, particularly by taking in how they process the work. And like I said, exposing yourself to the same ideas in a slightly different way over and over again by reading books, by taking classes. Now, whether that's with studying with the same person over time and hearing that they're gonna approach the same idea different ways over time, or by studying with multiple teachers. Certainly I've studied with multiple teachers and you have the advantage of the internet now. So uh, you can go and find the people whose ideas fire you up. And in fact, if you do find somebody whose ideas fire up, let me know because I want to check out those people and I'm happy to make those links available to anybody uh, who comes to the My Free Acting class page. I just want high quality professional acting advice to be freely available yeah, because it's still not going to replace the opportunity for folks to work in class. And I still think that it is a very valuable experience for students to work directly, either one-on-one -on -one or in a small group setting with a teacher, get notes that they can make changes in real time. Like, of course, if you were, I don't know, learning a sport, you know, there's a lot of practice you could do on your own to internalize the skills. There's a lot of training you could do on your own to build the muscles you need to do those skills. And then sometimes you would need somebody outside of you. So you could just be fully in doing whatever you were doing and have somebody else say, here's how it's looking. Here's how it's sounding. Here's something that I know from my experience is going to help with that technique. I don't think that there is a replacement for that. But man, you, there's a lot of stuff that you have access to now. Uh, and it's, I think, growing every day as more and more people look for information online. So thanks for being here, uh, the folks who are here, and thanks for watching the folks who are watching. Let's uh, quickly show everybody where they can find us. So if you go to myfreeactingclass.com, ta-da, then what will happen is uh, you will get this little pop-up that says join our mailing list, and then I will send out a message. I try and send one out every week. You know, I think I get three out of four uh, saying, here's the link for today's lesson. And here's a video from last week. And, you know, sometimes I throw in little tidbits of interesting things that I find during the week in there. And uh, on this page, you can find both the link for today's lessons, uh, 5 to 6 p.m. P uh, should be Pacific Daylight Time. You can also find the link right down here, info at myfreeactingclass.com uh, to send us your self-tapes. So uh, we had, I had three self-tapes submitted today. We're gonna watch two of them and save one of them for next week, just uh, in interest of time. Um, but click here, send us your self-tapes. Uh, the uh, in copyright law in Canada uh, says that educational use, you know, we're not making money doing this. You know, and uh, so that means that we are covered for excerpts of scripts, which you know, auditions are always just a couple of pages, you know, and for the video. So as long as you've not signed an NDA saying I, this is top secret and will not be shared with anybody, you're totally within your rights to send your tapes to me. And I will just leave off your last name you know, to make everybody that much more comfortable. And uh, today I've blocked out the name of the project uh, that uh, Elliot submitted the, uh, he said the script and he sent uh, his tape. So 
Uh, if you click here on the video archive, it would take you there. Whoop, there's that pop up again. Uh, a whole bunch of lessons. Now, this was last updated last year. So if you were like, wait, where's the new lessons? All you have to do is click on the YouTube channel right here. It would take you right here. And if you're like, man, I wonder where that lesson about changes is. Uh, you could go and see our last one. Hey, to find the changes, tell the story, uh, which is a very relevant transition point to what I want to talk about today. So depending on who you talk to, and there's battle between acting teachers about whether there's two steps or nine steps or 15 steps or whether you just need an objective. And I honestly don't care about anybody's essay. What I care about is whether or not it works. And I think that as actors, I want you to just keep paying attention to yourselves and what genuinely works for you. And I don't mean, just mean what helps you get work in film and TV, although of course that business side of things you know, is a piece of what we're doing here by in, interacting with the uh, world of professional film and TV acting, but also just what gives you the kind of performance you want. As a reminder, my foundation for film and TV acting is that you, the audience believes that you are a real person within that world, right? And I, the reason I say it like that is because that's going to be slightly different depending on the style of the show. Obviously, if you're in a like deeply gritty realistic show, or if you're in like a very broad comedy, if you're in a multi-camera sitcom, each of those is going to have a world that you're going to need to fit inside of. But inside of that world, we got to believe you're a real person. And if instead we see somebody who's trying to feel, who's trying to tell a story, if we see you trying at all, then the uh, the audience is going to trigger their kind of basic human like way I'm seeing somebody trying to show me something and I don't trust that as much and that's a basic human quality that we get if somebody that we meet is trying to show us how they feel even in subtle ways we're like whoa wait a second what's that guy's deal like if I see him trying and so I know there's something else going on now what that means for actors is that you are trying to internalize these skills so again just I like the athletic analogy. Um, it makes sense to me. If music makes more sense to you, then that it makes uh, is just as valid an analogy. The basic idea is if you are thinking about the details, the mechanical details, you do not have the, the space to be free to do the thing that you can then be paid for. Right? If you are still thinking about what are my lines, if you're still thinking about what am I doing with my hands, you know, where do I stand, or how do I break down story, if, you're still, if those things are still occupying your mind as you are acting, you know, then you are not free to be inside the story and telling the story. You know, and if you're like, wait, does that mean something about my work right, right now? You know, all it might mean is that there are pieces of it that you need to practice more. You know, it also might mean that some of the things that you want to do, you might have to let go on your next self-tape and go, okay, right, practicing those things, trying for those new skills, that's for practice. For the self-tape, I can only be paid for the thing that I can make look effortless, where I make it look like this is just me talking, this is just me doing the thing that I would normally do, and actually, I want people watching the tape to believe this is who, what I am like and who I am as a person even if this character is something that is a part of me that you know, is, doesn't get a whole lot of airplay, right? The, so, you know, Elliot, for instance, is auditioning for a lawyer uh, today. You know, and my guess is Elliot's not a lawyer. Uh, you know, certainly he's not wearing a suit and tie to the lesson today. You know, and uh, the, what we want is for people watching the tape to be like, man, that guy must just be a lawyer. Like that, that truly is best case scenario for decision makers in film and TV is that you walk out the door and they hire you and then they, you get to set and they assume that you actually are, I don't know, I, a friend of mine got hired to be a, a role of like a prison barber and they got, he got set and they were like, hey, I just, we want you to give this guy the something, something haircut. And he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm not a barber. I have no idea how to cut hair. And they had to like adjust that on the fly. I got to set once uh, after being cast as a priest and they were like, yeah, just do one of your pieces on forgiveness. And I was like, my, my what now? No, no, I, I'm an actor. Like a, the Bible, well, I think I used a Shakespeare play that was like bound in leather as my Bible for the audition. You know, like uh, that, that, that really is the ideal thing for decision makers you know, is they're like, oh yeah, great. You know, like we don't have to think about it because that person just is like that. 
Okay, so I would say that's one of the way so that it occurs when somebody's like so fully internalized uh, those skills, you know, that you don't see the trying. Yeah, and it's easier with figure skaters, right? You know, like to the, you watch somebody sort of move effortlessly on the ice duel and uh, do all this crazy spinning and turning, you know, and you check in with your body because it looks effortless. And then you check in with your body and you're like, oh, wow, really, really not effortless. Uh, but acting, especially film and TV acting, is an invisible art form. When it is done exceptionally well, you don't see it at all. You know, and, you know, and I would say, you know, to a lesser degree, um, you know, music and sport make useful analogies because when it's done really well, it looks like somebody just like doing what they were born to do. You don't see them thinking about where to put their feet. You don't see them th thinking about where to place their fingers. You get to like listen to the music or you get to watch them sort of run towards the goal. And let's, uh, that uh, watching somebody who's able to be in immersion, I think, is always super engaging for an audience, you know, regardless of the art form. Acting just happens to be the one that is invisible when it's done well. You know, and that means that if you choose to pursue professional acting, you spend the rest of your life with people getting confused and being like, oh, I could do that. You know, and that just means that the people who are doing it professionally are doing their job, right? Because it truly looks invisible and people check in with themselves and they're like, cool, I'm doing that right now. I'm just being a, being a human, no big deal. Uh, let's look at uh, this breakdown here. So uh, these are my five key questions. Story style, relationships, changes, want. You know, uh, now, the reason that I chose five is because I got five fingers and it makes it easy for me to remember. And I want something that uh, takes as little effort as possible like to remember. I'm not trying to write an essay. I'm just trying to like give myself some branching reminders of the things that are useful to look at. You know, it's certainly not like the most full version, you know, but you can go find the like 27 steps if that's, you know, uh, what you want and, you know, sort of place them how you like. Now, the way that, um, uh, the, oh shoot, where are we? Did I lose the, the okay, one second. Um, and so uh, if we look at, right, uh, we talk about story, style, relationships, uh, changes. So how are your feelings or opinions change? How the story changes, uh, arc or beats? Yeah, and, and I would say this is an extremely key to telling a good story. You know, I think that even if you have the skill to show up and like we talked about last week, make a really clear choice about your relationship with the other person, with the place, with what you're there to do. Let's say you have that really strong feeling or opinion and you're inside the style and you understand the story and you come in and you just stay with that choice the entire time. You know, this is my choice, this is my choice, this is my choice, this is my choice, this is my choice. And even if it's like very interesting, very believable, likely we will not experience you as telling a skilled story. You know, like just not going to capture an audience if you take, uh, stay at the same level the entire time. You know, and, and that's just one of those kind of basic storytelling things that I think uh, you'll get almost every acting teacher to agree on. And they'll use different language for it. You will often hear the word beats. You know, the only reason I don't use that is because I don't want to uh, use a surface level word that, um, that is jargon. You know, but beat, a beat is a uh, change in the emotional tone of a story you know, or a new thought. It's usually accompanied by a small pause. Writers will sometimes write in the word beat but that uh, doesn't mean that that's the, those are the only beats in the script. It just means that there's some really significant change that they don't want people to miss when they're reading the script, right? So if a writer writes that in, it could be because the lines don't do a, a clear job of, of um, telling people that there's a change, right? It's when you get a, a, a script that says, and somebody says, you know, uh, what's going on? You know, the, you know, and, uh, the character says nothing, you know, and then the writer says beat, it's fine. You know, the, then that tells a different story than nothing, it's fine. Do you understand? You know, like, it's like, okay, there's something going on for the character and anybody reading the script is going to be like, oh, oh, this is a clue that there is, there are deeper layers of this. Now, writers don't always put that in partly because they want to respect the actor and not tell the actor where to make the shifts and changes. But I think that is information that those shifts and changes are extraordinarily important. And if you don't have those written in, and even when you do, looking for them is one of the ways that you mine scripts for creative potential. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how to find those changes today. We're going to use uh, two different self-tapes 
as a way to talk about them. So I can kind of point out the changes that are happening and I will still talk about the rest of the things, story and style and relationships you know, and what the character wants, you know, but I'm gonna keep bringing it back to changes. Now, sometimes I will use the word arc because for me that uh, is, is a way to think about changes over the entire story or over the entire scene, right? So there's the arc of the entire show, you know, uh, there's the arc of this entire episode, there's the arc of this scene, right? So where does it go? Yeah, and I, even when I'm doing, when me personally, I'm auditioning for something that's only a couple of lines, uh, I still wanna try and give some kind of arc, even if it's small. I still want to find some little moment of like, my character doesn't know this in my moment before. And even if they realize it before their first line, and then there's one line and then it's over. Okay, that's an arc. They didn't, I, I made a choice. They didn't know they had to, I, my character had to discover the thing in the scene. You know, and so there's some kind of change there. It's not just like, I'm shocked, I'm shocked, I'm shocked, I'm still shocked, cut. You know, even if I do a great job of that, it's just not going to be as alive as the story could be. You know, so. Uh, let's jump in and uh, look at Elliot's self-tape. Now, so this is for a professional project. I quickly want to talk about um, self-tape camera technique, you know, so that I can uh, reference that. You know, uh, Elliot, you know, if you there's uh, one thing in particular that I would like to workshop with you, since you happen to be here, you know, um, are you okay with me sort of turning the lens to you after we watch the tape a little bit, you know, just so I can. Uh, give people the example and, and workshop something physical with you quickly. Okay, great. Uh, so this is called the frame. It's what the camera sees. The frame that we want for an audition is somewhere between uh, a medium close-up, which is where I'm in now, or a medium shot, uh, which is you know, down to about waist level. I usually cut it off a little bit uh, before now. I tend to prefer a, to like a tighter medium close-up for my own auditions, but I think anywhere between here, you know, and you know, here, you're probably that's probably where you want to stay because we want to see stay as close to your eyeballs, see as much of your eyes as possible. Uh, one of a really simple mistake that gets made in framing a lot is we get a bunch of space over the head. Just be careful about that one. You, we, you don't need headroom. If you're doing a self-tape audition, uh, you know, don't cut off your hairstyle if you like your haircut and want to show it off, uh, but uh, we don't need to see the wall above your head. Uh, blank wall behind you is ideal. You definitely don't need like a blue screen backdrop or anything fancy. Um, one of the tapes we're going to see today looks like it was shot in a professional studio, uh, either that or, you know, or someone's got that kind of setup at home, uh, but truly just like a blank wall will do you just fine. Uh, some kind of light in front of you. Oh, I found out a great trick if anybody's got a ring light at home. If so one of the things uh, with ring lights, and I think actually one of the, you'll see it in one of the self tapes, is that um, when you, you can see like the actual sort of ring reflected in the eye and sometimes uh, it's quite distracting, especially if the ring light's quite close to you. So uh, here's what you do. You flip the ring light around to face the other direction and you put a big sheet of paper on the other side. And then what you actually, you get almost the same amount of light and you get more reflecting surface so it softens it up. You know, and uh, if you wanna get really tricky, what I did with mine is I took like a chopstick and I sort of like, taped it to the middle, you know, to, um, so that it doesn't like, so the paper doesn't like hug the ring light, it's like curved out a little bit. And you get an effect very, very similar to a softbox uh, light, you know, but without having the fuss of putting together a softbox light, cause you know, it's just a sheet of paper, it's not a big deal. You know, one of the things that I've been saying for ages is that like, if you only got desk lamps to work with, like, you know, if you are just like, have your phone and you're like, dang, I'm staying at my friend's house and I have an audition to tape for tomorrow. Like you can do that. Like you just kind of got to get creative and I've done it before and I've gotten good feedback on those tapes. You know, and you know, in that case, you take desk lamps, stick them right behind, behind the camera, put the phone on a stack of books, you know, so that it can like be stable and at eye level, stay nice and close to it, get a blank wall behind you. Yeah, and you can do that same thing with the piece of paper and just put diffusion over top of the lamps, you know, so that they're not quite as harsh, you don't get as much shadow. So uh, lighting, audio, especially if you're recording with a phone, make sure you are closer to the phone, you know, than wh uh, whatever, uh, whoever's reading, uh, because phones are really, really good at preferentially you know, picking up the audio of the people who are closest, you know, and you want to make sure you're louder. So there's the like quick you know, overview and you'll see that you know, in both these self tapes, you know, there's a, a bunch of good stuff going on. So here's Elliot's. 
Uh, so, um, Elliot, if you are uploading this, especially to Actors Access, one of the first things is do not do a fade in. Uh, the, um, most of the uploading services use the first frame as their thumbnail. Uh, and so what that means is that if their uh, producers are scanning through a bunch of these, uh, then they will look at your thumbnail and just see black. And it would be better if they saw your face. So, uh, and there's your face. Uh, now, the, it, even if uh, you needed to uh, have this thing plugged in behind you, you know, my advice here would have been to like, get this chair out of there, move your whole setup closer to you so you could be in a tighter close-up and have mostly blank wall behind you. you know, uh, your lighting here is solid, you know, but we got a bunch of space over your head and the frame is just too far out. Oh, and I, I didn't think to do this beforehand, but like you could actually uh, just crop this in. So even if you realized after the fact, oh, that's, you know, I, it's too far out, you could crop it in. You know, like most phones will let you do that right you know, on the phone. You know, that's the fastest, simplest way to do it. Uh, so let's watch some of this. There we go. So we got light reflected in his eyes. You know, it's not a lot. You know, so uh, you know, he, so he's not looking as fabulous. You know, as he actually is, partly because of lighting. If somebody you know looks more beautiful, probably it's because their lighting is good. So it's so one thing that you also might want to play with here. Right, watch as somebody come in. There's a bunch of, uh, of rustling with the paper, which you can hear on the tape is actually sh shockingly loud. Like it's, it's quite surprising you know, how well the microphone picks up crinkling paper. Uh, and, and we are now you know, 16 seconds in. You know, um, one of the things I've said in self-tapes uh, before is today in the day of self-tapes, it's possible that casting will only watch the first 15 to 20 seconds before deciding, does this person fit our idea of lawyer? Uh, and then they will only watch the rest if. You know, so uh, this cord you know, uh, that is you know, taking the shot and the, the basically the yellow thing beside your face, shinier than you are and a different color. You know, and so it's just gonna keep catching people's eyes. Certainly you know, it does with me when I watch it and I wanna be watching your eyeballs. So getting, uh, moving you over a little bit, making sure there's more light reflecting your eyes and just cropping out anything that's gonna be distracting like that uh, would, would serve you in terms of keeping the focus just on Elliot. So tell me about your symptoms. Dizziness, headaches, sometimes nausea and vomiting. I can't move my head or straighten my neck too much. So it's difficult for me to sleep. Look, ah, dizziness, headaches, sometimes nausea and vomiting. I can't move my head or straighten my neck too much. So it's difficult for me to sleep. Tell me about your medication and the physical therapy you're having. Painkillers, sleeping pills, and physical therapy twice a week. Why is he asking these questions? Are they going to give me money? Can you describe the accident? How did you get in? The subway door. I got up and tried to get out. The door was closing and it just caught me in the head. I was screaming. The door didn't open and it was stuck or something. I couldn't move and everyone was yelling. Miss, miss, you have to help me. I'm going crazy because of my accident. The MTA should pay me for my suffering. I don't have money to pay my bills. Stop, sit down, sit down. Okay, so there's some kind of like battle happening here, you know, or like you know, she's you know getting up. The character should stop, stop, sit down. I'm not seeing any sort of reaction from you, you know, to uh, the thing that's happening. All right, so this is probably enough. Like we could watch you know the next minute of the tape, but you know, uh, plenty to talk about in the first 90 seconds. You know, uh, one of the things that I wanted to workshop with you physically, you know, is um, body posture. You know, I think you know pacing here is really relevant as well. And I know this doesn't you know, uh, fall into changes, but I am not seeing lawyer right at the top here. Unless you, I mean, unless we're talking um, like really sort of tired public defender. You know, like if we saw in the script, you know, uh, that right because he's not wearing a tie, you know, because he's not wearing a suit jacket, uh, because the posture is not upright, you know, and because you're not standing. You know, so all of those things, you know, uh, if 
the goal of this or if the breakdown was like overworked public defender doesn't care, um, you know, then, then maybe, and maybe it does say that in the breakdown because you didn't send me the breakdown, you know, uh, but I would say that, uh, you know, tie, blazer, uh, you know, uh, upright body posture, like those who do a lot of the work of lawyer here in the first 16 or 20 seconds. I also think that uh, your choice to take so much time watching her walk in at the beginning did you a disservice. You know, that if you're grilling her, you know, it would have been nice to jump into that grilling right away. You know, and uh, the, this sort of does lead us into the changes uh, that with each one of your lines, you sort of took this long pause beforehand. You know, and, and again, if you're grilling her, if your job you know, here in this scene is to like prove that she's full of it and doesn't deserve any money, right? If you're the sort of uh, person who's trying to disqualify her, you know, then uh, getting in there faster and then choosing your moment for that change. You know, and, and I think that that's the impulse. The impulse is like, well, I want to make sure that I'm like processing what she's saying and I'm giving it time. You know, and I, I think that that's a really solid impulse that you want to place at one specific spot. Because if you take that long pause before every single line, you know, then uh, you don't give the impression that your character, again, you know, is like a uh, sharp professional, like good at their job, you know, like taking this you know, person, you know, uh, testimony apart. What we want is for it to come across a lawyer. And you know, so your reader could definitely help you with the pacing in some of those spots. Um, you know, but I think that that's you know, on you. Now, I'm just going to quickly flip you know, to, uh, where are we? There we go. Uh, so, uh, and as, so as simple as this is, stay physically exactly the way you are right now. You know, uh, and uh, right, if you, so if you saw Elliot like this, you know, then of course you're not going to, um, like even if he if was wearing a suit and tie, probably you're not going to see lawyer. And so it really can be as simple as like, imagine there's a string up the top of your head, roll your shoulders back, you know, pull your chest up, you know, and stay up there. So do that for me. There you go. Exactly. Right. So you're just like leading with your chest and you're going to keep now one of the things that you'll see later in the scene is you start getting in here, you know, and again, when you do this, you're going to lose status. You know, like uh, the right, what we want, you know, is for you to be kind of uptight, probably, you know, or at least your version of that, you know, like, I don't, we, of course, we don't want to be rigid, we still want it to come across as you, you know, but we want the like, clean, clear, I want to impress the judge, I want to win you, you know, as opposed to the like, I'm, I'm having feelings about this, you know, you, right, if your job is to be the lawyer, the like, the lady having all the feelings, the one you're, uh, it, you know, is the one who you're examining. Right. So again, so you feel how your like shoulders have rolled back in just you know by accident. And partly it's because your phone's down below you. But if you just keep that up, right? If you, if, you know, right, so try, so try it again, make that adjustment. And if we see this, right, you know, and maybe if we're seeing this much of his body, if we're seeing medium close up, you can cross, try crossing your arms over your chest. You have to try that to like keep the keep the chest up, you know, cross your arms over your chest. Right. So yeah, 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 good. Because with the shoulders rolled in, it's like he's a little grumpy. But as soon as he you know, brings his chest up, we're like, he looks disapproving. You know, and physically telling a story like that in the first you know, 10 seconds can be really meaningful. It also can help you feel more like the character. Does that make sense? You know, so now let's go back and look at this and, and sort of reference the, the changes you know, in it. Uh, and so the, if we look at these first 90 seconds, Uh, right, so uh, you know, seeing him uh, watch the um, watch the person who he's cross-examining walk in, you know, in, interesting choice. And I think that there was the intention here was probably like, oh, I want to want to add a little something of my own to this story rather than like jumping right into the middle of it. Uh, I don't see a strong feeling or opinion here. Again, partly because of the body posture, you know, and the kind of neutrality of the face. And so again, the character just looks tired. You know, and so unless, unless we're seeing you know, like tired public defender, you know, I think that that choice uh, doesn't serve you here. And let's take a look at the script and see what the script says off the top. Thank you for sending the script, by the way. Uh, so MTA lawyer, here we go. Uh, court reporter setting up, everyone glances at Mavis coldly as she walks in. Okay, so they glance at her coldly. Uh, the tell me about your symptoms. 
right? Um, the Mavis translates into Mandarin from Mrs. Yang. Uh, Yang. Now, in, interesting, you know, they gave it to you uh, the piece of the actual script. You know, this is really, really normal to give you a, a page from the shooting draft of the script, you know, which has Mrs. Yang talking in Mandarin and Mavis talking in English over top of her. Your reader chose to do this and then do that. Honestly, I think that the best thing you to keep your pace up, you know, would have been to, to just skip, you know, uh, doing this twice, you know, like they did with the rest of the lines, sort of and just say it in um, uh, and just say it in English. You know, obviously when they there's gonna they're gonna have the ability to subtitle it and have both characters talking at the same time, you know, when they shoot the actual script. But right now we want the focus on the MTA lawyer. Tell me about the medication and physical therapy. She starts to become agitated. Can you describe the accident? How did you get injured? Right. So uh, stops. Uh, you know, sit down. Right. So uh, there's this this whole fight that's going on here. Counselor, you want me to stop writing? In this first page and a half, you know, uh, that gets us through the like the first ninety seconds. He doesn't have a lot of lines here. Right. It also doesn't say very much about his strong feeling or opinion about her. You know. So we'd want to make that strong feeling and opinion. But if we're talking about changes, okay, we know uh, the only clue that we've got in the script here is everyone glances at Mavis coldly. Mavis is the translator. You know, so your uh, story, we're gonna go, okay, right, your job here is to like cross-examine this person, you know, and you know, like I get them to reveal something, you know, that lets you invalidate their claim. Great, okay, so I, I know the story, you know, like I'm a lawyer, I'm, uh, you know, examining this woman. Um, we know uh, we have a clue to your uh, relationship, your strong feeling or opinion about the translator. We don't have your strong feeling or opinion about the woman who you are uh, examining. And so we'd want to add that. And then we want to make sure that the two of them are really distinct, or we want to play with having the two of them be really distinct. And then we get, when we get into changes, you know, so that it doesn't sort of stay on the same level, you'd want to play with, uh, okay, I'm going to ask my first question, and then based on your answer and based on the choice I've made about my strong feeling or opinion, is that is that going to change my opinion about you or is it just going to make it stronger? So let's say my strong feeling or opinion relationship was last week, you know, is that uh, this person is making it up. All right, so I'm going to start in, in, you know, in a, from a place of disapproval. I'm going to start you know, with like, okay, like, why don't you tell everybody why you were totally full of it? You know, and then she's like, blah, 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 says a bunch of stuff. And you're like, yeah, see, okay. Right? Do I take in the judge? Do I take in the jury? Do I, I have a moment of great? You like you're you know giving me enough rope to hang you with here? You know the but then if I'm making my case, you know then maybe I would build the changes like that. You know and maybe you know my impulse is more had to be more of a ruthless lawyer than you are. You are like so if we went with them, like it, maybe if we built on Elliot's impulse for like the disheveled public defender, uh, public defender, uh, where you're like look this case is a waste of my time, like it's wasted everybody's time is going to get thrown out. Let's just get her out the door. Right. So they're like, okay, right. They've called for a translator. Perfect. Yeah. The, like the, right. So my opinion of the translator is like, you're wasting everybody's time. You know, my opinion of this lady is you're wasting everybody's time, you know? And so that's what we're seeing. You know, still, you'd probably want the tie, but maybe you'd like have the top button undone and have it like a little bit loose, you know, like the, I don't know, like $4 thrift store, you know, uh, you know, blazer, you know, over top. Like, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money, especially not at the resolution, you know, that you're sending in an audition. Like it doesn't have to fit any, like have to, have to fit really well to like there. You know, so... You, you got a lot more options in terms of, uh, of your wardrobe, right? You can borrow stuff, whatever. You know, uh, you got to to make that work. I do think it is important in like helping them see right away this is who the character is. Uh, and so let's go back and uh, and look at the video and think about those changes. So. Tell me about your symptoms. Uh, right, the the, <clears throat> the head cocked off to one side. You know, uh, you, uh, part of like the body posture that doesn't read as professional. That and the uh, the shoulders rolled in. I know I keep harping on that, but like you know, that's my top level note for you here is is physical. You know, and I want to keep bringing it back to the changes as well. Dizziness, headaches, sometimes nausea and vomiting. I can't move my head or straighten my neck too much, so it's different.
Uh, right, so uh, we are seeing uh, a reaction, you know, like, so the, it's clear that, you know, the reactions are important to Elliot, and, right, you can, you saw a second ago, you know, the, as he's hearing the testimony, you know, he reacts, like, oh, he's got this, you know, thing, um, the, does it change something about his opinion, does it change something about the script, not really. You know, there's a moment of reaction, and then he goes back to right, you know, where he was before in terms of his opinion about this person or what's happening. Tell me about your medication and the physical therapy you're having. Now, uh, that little head shake, just again, uh, and I know that I'm getting really granular here. Hopefully, you know, that advice is interesting, useful to you in some way. Uh, is it something that typically indicates uncertainty? You know, and... Uh, Actors do it all the time, I think, because they're not sure what to do or they're not sure about their lines. You know, but again, that's my my take on that. This is probably an Elliot thing as opposed to an MTA lawyer thing. Uh, and so, just be careful about you know things uh, like that's one of the reasons that you might want to watch your tapes, you know, afterwards, and you just review them and be like, oh, okay, so like I see there's physical stuff happening here. Painkillers, sleeping pills, and physical therapy twice a week. Why is he asking these questions? Are they going to give me money? Right. So again, there's a reaction, you know, uh, and then that reaction you know, was definitely uh, read as over the top, even if that is an absolutely normal thing for you to do. To me, that read as false. You know, uh, just remember how close the camera is seeing you, right? Um, if uh, if the reaction is something that's going to read as false to somebody who's like kind of arm's length away, you know, uh, and that can be a good tester if you're there with a real person, just put them arm's length away and be like, oh, right now I can really feel where I'm like trying to use my face to tell a story. Having the opinion was enough there. You didn't need to indicate it for us. Can you describe the accident? Right. So now he's, he's getting uh, like kind of frustrated with her, you know, and so now we're getting a little bit of change, but we're a full minute in. Be our decision makers gonna wait that long, you know, and that's the thing that I don't know here, right? So if, if that's the choice that Elliot's made here, okay, great. Like this person, you know, uh, is like, is my character's gonna get frustrated? I'm gonna find some way to anchor that, you know, I want to come across as a professional, but like, come on, lady, like just get to the point, you know, uh, then I'm, uh, then I would coach you physically and vocally to keep that in professional land, you know, and just encourage you to bring it in much, much sooner. You know, the way that we might choose to do that, you know, is like have the moment with Mavis of like, oh God, and then go right back to the questioning. Right, so jump in with the questioning, skip the uh, repeat of the first paragraph, you know, uh, and then like know that uh, something that she says there contradicts something, you know, that's here in, you know, on your papers, right? So you're anchoring the like, oh, I'm getting frustrated, you know, with something that adds to the story where you're like, wait a second, the thing she said, that's not what she said yesterday in her testimony. Okay, this is a waste of our time you know, building, you know, that frustration that's seen if that's the thing that makes sense to you. How did you get in the subway door? I got up and tried to get out. The door was closing and it just caught me in the head. I was screaming. The door. You know, and then in terms of his reaction here, so again, he's reacting to it. But I would say that like, although there was that in initial impulse for change, now he's reverted to his earlier opinion. You know, so what he's gone is like, I'm on this level, up oh, there's a little pop of something. Okay, now I'm back down to here where, you know, like this is kind of a waste of my time and I don't really care. You know, and so uh, if we were coaching it, you know, then it's the kind of thing where I would look for a reason to uh, get more invested. Maybe he doesn't want to like get enraged I and mean, that doesn't fit the script necessarily, doesn't necessarily fit the style. You know, uh, but having it simmer, having a little something extra going on, it's going to keep his attention out here where he can see his eyeballs. And it's also going to help tell a more interesting story. It might also help justify why she loses her mind and, you know, starts shouting and screaming and needs to be, you know, uh, settled down in a second. Open and it was stuck or something. I couldn't move and everyone was yelling. Miss, miss, you have to help me. I'm going crazy because of my accident. The MTA should pay me for my suffering. I don't have money to pay my bills. Stop. Sit down. Right. So that's a spot where your reader really needed to take out the space in between those lines. Just go dot, 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 dot. And if you've got a reader who's not an actor, doesn't know what they're doing, then that's fine. You know, like you can still just be like, great. You look to lower your volume, take out all the space in between. And I've done this with friends before. I'm just like, yeah, I'm sorry. I need you to be more boring and just like, just say the words. Don't try and do anything with them. But like that pacing is real important in terms of like you reacting. And especially if there's a build to the scene, which there really is, right? Stop, settle down. You know, I didn't see stop, settle down in your performance. I, and, and even when the other characters said it, you know, uh, 
the you know, I didn't see how that impacted you and your sense of how that changed. So Elliot, I'm, I'm like, I'm not trying to like utterly dismantle your performance here. <laughs> You're like, okay, good. So, so like, he's giving me the face that says that like, you know, this is useful here. I'm just going through and going like, hey, there's like, a, there's always a hundred little things you can do. You know, if you were just gonna do one thing, body posture, right? Like put on a tie, roll your shoulders back. You know, if, if you had the space, you know, to bring in a stronger relationship, you know, and, uh, and then, you know, uh, give yourself more of an arc there. And I would say, go with what's easy, go with what makes sense to you, which was the frustration that showed up a little bit. So, you know, we'd put whatever language, if I was coaching it, I'd ask Elliot what the, the word he used for that feeling, because truly it doesn't matter what we call it. What matters is what makes Elliot feel it, you know, and then we build that into the scene so that it kind of built up to the point where like this lady starts going crazy and you know he's like okay look I'm gonna look at the you know I'm gonna throw I'm throwing my hands I'm gonna look at the judge I'm gonna take a step back I'm gonna get my papers and put them on the table like this is a circus you know like clearly this deserves to be dismissed my goal always is just to get the judge to dismiss the case right so I stay on my task the entire time uh is any of that useful for you Elliot Yes, yes, that's definitely useful. Um, I I knew about the tie. It's just that like I I always mess up ties, so I just said, you know what? Last minute, I just said, forget the tie, and um, and I knew that would come back to haunt me. I, I knew, <laughs> that, I, unfortunately, I have to admit that I knew that that would come back to haunt me. Okay, I got um, a trick for you there. Get a tie that's too long, and then have a friend tie it for you, and just never totally undo it. Right, because nobody's mm -hmm. going to see the bottom of the tie anyway, you know, and so it doesn't have to be the perfect length for you if they're only seeing this much of it. Yeah. And then you can keep like the perfect impeccable knot that somebody else ties and just keep it hanging on a hanger the whole time. Right, like there's, okay. there's kind of always a workaround for this though. I don't want you to stress yourself out on wardrobe either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and, and um, as far as like, you know, like we were sitting at a, uh, we're not like in a courtroom. We're at like, I forgot one of those rooms where it's just like four of you guys and then they're recording. It's supposed to be like a tape recorder recording her. And then no, no one like MTA lawyers, like, you know, they think this woman is just like full of nonsense. <laughs> so I was just trying to, uh, you know, just basically saying like, I don't like, I was trying to show that I didn't really care, but I, yes. I okay. do. Yes, that's perfect. That's perfect. Thank you so much for telling me that because I, I truly think that anytime as an actor, your, my, your impulse is I don't care, you are wrong. You know, like, and that is one of the, one of the only things that I can like really definitively say, cause I'm really in the like, you know, your choice, it's all like fluid. There's not clear answers, but I do think that if you didn't care, there would be no point to showing you on camera and they would yeah, just, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, say, I'm saying the lawyer, the lawyer, I know. the character. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, no, I don't mean like you, Elliot, don't care. Cause like you clearly care. You give it a lot of thought. Like, <laughs> you get out of the tie. I just mean that like, if your character doesn't care about what's happening, they're not going to be interesting to watch. Mm, yeah, and so sure. I would say I would say that uh, that almost always when I'm coaching actors, if their impulse is my character doesn't care, it's because um, it is because there isn't a choice in the script, and they're like, I don't know what to add. You know, so because there's nothing, no strong opinion written in the script, my choice is no strong opinion because I'm I'm just trying to like do what it says, and then it doesn't say a strong opinion. And you're right, it doesn't say a strong opinion. That I think is where it's really important to bring something in of your own, because otherwise you're just telling a boring story. Right. Right, like right. anytime there's an option yeah. to make a choice and you're like, my choice is no choice. It's just like, it's just not that interesting to watch. That's my opinion. Right. No, 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 that's true. Because even when I watch like stuff like Ozark and other shows, I'm like, you know, I see what they all bring, and, you know, from a, a yeah, 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 standpoint. Right? Yeah, and so, I see they bring something in. And so when, um, when you have a character you know, who deeply, deeply cares about something and, you know, and then pretends not to, that can sometimes be really interesting. Mm -hmm. you know, but the, but the, the premise there is that like, first your character has to like really care with, about what's going on because that's the only way that it's interesting to play, play one of those like stone-faced killer, like nothing, you know, like yeah. nothing bothers me. I don't care about anything because like you're looking in their eyes and you're like, that person's haunted. There's like there's something going on in there because if somebody actually plays, I don't care. You know, it ends up being pretty dead. Right. You know, um, and uh, and we're not dead inside here. Like, the, the, right. don't take that less <laughs> away. I'm saying, you know, that like, thank you for letting me in on the choices because I really do think the choices matter. And I think if you'd made different choices, then we might have seen more Elliot in this. That's that's my guess. Right. 
No. I agree. I agree. But I love the feedback for sure. So I definitely would use that, you know, to work on my next one. Too. Great, great, great. You know, like the um, right, it, it, like it's not um, certainly it's not for everyone. You know, but this kind of like basic format of like, what is the story? What is the style? So you know, what kind of world you're living inside? What are the strong feeling or opinions? And then how do they change over the course of the story? Uh, the, you know, and then next week we're going to go into like, what do you want the other person to do or feel, you know, and, and each of them kind of builds on each other, you know, in my opinion. Oh man. Um, the, I've got another like fantastic tape to watch. And lately I've been in the habit of just being like, cool, we're going to do all the tapes. Uh, and, and so I'm just going to say, uh, James and Natalia, I'm going to make you wait until next week uh, because it was wonderful uh, going into detail on Elliot's tape. You know, again, Elliot, thanks for being brave and submitting it and for being so gracious about like taking the notes and you know, trying to see the value in them. And, uh, and I think it gives a really good, clear example of changes in the way this actually applies, right? If you're, if you're reading a script that's got really clear changes written in it, it can be easier, more intuitive. The tricky ones are like the, are the ones like the one that Elliot did. You know, and a lot of supporting roles are like this one that we just saw Elliot do. You know, where it's like, mostly it's listening. The character's got three lines. You know, they already cast the leads in LA and now they want to like grab the other supporting characters who are just going to be there for like that one day or two days you know, of courtroom scene. Um, and with this character, probably a single day, right? Like, because, because really it's following the translator. You're probably never going to see MTA lawyer again. Probably never going to see, you know, Mrs. Yang again. Right, you know, so this is like one day on set. It's a great credit for your resume. Totally accessible thing because it's some even somebody without professional credits, they're like, oh yeah, great. It's one day. You know, like if we see it in the tape, and then we can just say, great, do exactly that on set. You know, and uh, you know, cut print, move on. You know, they can keep their focus on Mavis because the cameras are going to be on Mavis most of the time anyway. Uh, so, uh, like, good clear example because often these are the ones that actors like, like. Uh, are uh, find difficult. You know, like they're like, no, give me six pages where I can like get into the juice. And yeah, of course, because then the writer gave you all the changes and they had their attention on you. Writer wasn't thinking deeply about MTA lawyer. That's definitely something that like the actors got to do the extra work of like bringing MTA lawyer to life. All right. Uh, Thank you for your attention, everybody, today. Uh, remember that you can find the link to these classes uh, or uh, you can join the mailing list at myfreeactingclass.com. And if you're like, hey, I really like this Michael Bean guy, I wonder what it would be like to uh, take his acting class or uh, get some coaching from him from my next audition. Well, <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. Uh, if you go to michaelbean.ca, uh, then you can find information about my acting classes. And uh, I don't know, there's, although there's lots and lots of Michael Beans in the world, I've been doing this for the last 20 years. If you put Michael Bean acting teacher, you know, into you know, any browser, you'll probably find what you need. Uh, thanks so much for uh, joining us today. And I'll be back next Monday at uh, from 5 to 6 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, UTC minus 7 for our friends in Europe. Bye, everybody. <laughs>